In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this 3D planet effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up guys, Thrill here back with another video and as you can see, this is the final output. Now it looks really crazy, but actual effect is pretty simple. So to create this, let's go and open the photo. So I'm gonna go to file, open and select your background image, go and open it. Now you have to be a little careful when you select your image, as you can see it has really straight horizon, it's a little bit panoramic and the ratio between sky and buildings is really good. Uh, an image like this will not work, so be careful when you select it. Okay, so first thing we need to make it square because the filter that we apply works properly on square documents. To do that, go to image and image size. And in the image size, first of all, make sure that this thing here, you have to turn it off. So now this is off. And in the width, um, pick a number between your height and width. So I'm gonna go and keep it 2500 right now. So 2500, you can also push for 3000. So 2500 by 2500, it's square. And as you can see here, I have pixels active, then go and hit OK. Now we have to apply the filter. And for that, first of all, let's double click on the background and unlock it. And before applying the filter, we have to flip the image upside down. So go and press Ctrl T, right click and select flip vertical, then go and confirm it. Now let's apply the filter. So for that, go to filter, distort, and here go and select polar coordinates. So click on that and select first option, rectangular to polar. Let's zoom out so we can see what is going on. So as you can see, effect is already looking pretty good. Then go and hit OK. Now it looks really good but as you can see we have image stretched out in the corner and we also have this really big patch to fix here. Uh, so to get rid of the corners we can simply crop it. So for that select your crop tool and here make sure you have one by one square. Then hold your alt and shift key and drag it from a corner until you only have the image. So I think this looks good enough. Then go and confirm it and you can also turn on delete crop pixel so it will completely erase all of this deleted. So confirm it. So that is done and now we have to fix this line in between and it depends on your image like how difficult it will be. So let's see how we can fix this one here. And to do that, first of all, let's go and create new blank layer. So go and click on this icon. We have blank layer. After that, select your brush tool here. And first thing we will do is pick up a color from the sky. So hold your alt key and click here. So you have sample color from the sky. Make your brush a little bit bigger and also make sure that hardness is absolutely zero. Then go and paint here like this. Don't worry about this here, we will erase it. So first of all paint here. Now, again hold your alt key and pick up a color from here. But this time go and reduce your opacity somewhere around like 40, 50% and then go and start painting here. It looks really crazy, I know, but we will fix it. Now we will apply Gaussian blur so it will fade a little bit more. And for that, let's go to filter blur and here go and select Gaussian blur. Don't apply too much, just increase it carefully until you think okay it's working fine and I think this is good enough. I think 20 pixel looks good then go and hit ok. Now as you can see it's still not very smooth so to fix that we will use clone tool. So you can right click here and select your clone stamp tool. And here in the opacity make sure it's like 20-30% so I'm gonna go and keep it let's say 30% looks good. And uh, to use it you first have to sample it from somewhere. So I'm gonna hold my alt key and do a click here so we can sample sky from here. Then go and paint on top of it here. Uh, something like this. It can take a little bit trial and error but don't worry about it. And after that I'm gonna go and alt click here so we can sample sky from here and then paint it in between like this. The process might be a little different depending on your every image. So just do everything you can to fix this. So I think this looks all right and the more time you spend in details, the better it will be. So that's done and for the grass over here, I'm gonna use the same tool, but this time I'm gonna go and make my opacity 100%. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when you use clone tool, as you can see, I am using it on a different layer and in my layers, I have current and below. So I can simply use it on empty layer. If it's only on current layer and you try to sample something, it just won't work. So make sure it is current and below here and you are using a layer. Okay, so let's go and start cloning. So I'm gonna hold my alt key and sample grass from here and then paint it in between. 
and this looks good. Don't paint over the shadow, maybe a little bit to fade it out. So all the planet work is done and now we can add the subject. So for that go to file, go and select place linked and here select the subject, go and place it. I'm gonna go and confirm it. Now you also have to be careful when you select the photo of a subject or yourself. So when you click picture of yourself, make sure that you are standing here and the camera is somewhere around here. So it will give you illusion of this perspective that will match with the planet. That clear? Now let's go and make the image a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna press Ctrl T, hold my shift key and make it a little bit smaller and put it here and confirm it. Now we have to remove the background and to be honest it's not that easy image especially because the color of hair and the background is same but we will do our best. So right click here and select your quick selection tool and make sure your model layer is active then go and make the selection. Now as you can see here we need to remove some selection from here so for that go and select the minus option and remove it from here like this. And another problem is that uh, let's go and click on the plus one. Okay, so if I try to select it, it selects everything and it's really annoying. So what I will do, I'm gonna press Ctrl Z and instead I'm gonna change the tool. So I'm gonna right click here on the third icon and select magnetic lasso tool. And to add the selection, I'm gonna make sure that it is on second option here and then go and start adding the selection. And in case if you wanna remove any dots, you can use your backspace key. And to finish the selection, go and just double click and it will do the job. Okay, so this is looking all right. And after that, go and click on your layer mask. So the background is cut and we have to fix a little bit of hair. So for that, right click on your mask and select select and mask. In older version, it's called refine edge. So click on that. And to fix the hair, make sure you have second option here. And then go and start painting on the edges like this. So it's kind of terrible, I'm gonna press Ctrl Z, uh, make my brush really small and then go and paint again. Okay, so this is kind of all right, then go and hit okay. And as you can see, we have this really ugly patches here that we have to fix. And since it's a layer mask, you can simply paint with black color. So select your brush tool and make sure you have black color here and the opacity is 100%. After then right click and make the brush bit smaller like this and in the hardness actually you have to make sure it's like 60-70% so it's not really soft and then you can go and erase it from here. Now to be honest it's not a very good image to work with especially for the beginners so don't worry if you don't get it right in the first try. So I think this looks fine and now let's adjust the model. So I'm gonna select my move tool, move her somewhere around here. Okay, that's pretty big. I'm gonna press Ctrl T, hold my shift key and okay. Then let's go and make it a bit more smaller. Now we have to do a couple of things. One, we have to add a light source and then we will have to add shadows. So first of all, let's add the light source. For that, go and create a new blank layer. Double click on the layer name and name it light. Now go and select your paint bucket tool, right click paint bucket and in the color make sure you have black color. So press D for default colors and select black color and fill it. After that go to filter, render and here go and select lens flare. In the lens flare make sure it is in complete center and you select 105. Then go and hit OK. After that in the blend mode go and change it to screen. So the black background is gone, now let's make it smaller. So Control T. Hold your shift key and make it smaller. I'm gonna go and put the, it is somewhere around here. Okay, that looks all right. Go and confirm it. Now let's add the color. So I'm gonna go to image, adjustment and select hue saturation. And in the hue saturation, first of all, go and turn on colorize and then increase your saturation. So you can see what color is there. And then change your hue until it looks really nice and orange. So I think that is fine. Then go and hit okay. Light is done. Now let's go and add the shadows. So now go and create new blank layer, double click on the name and rename it contact shadow. Okay, now zoom in on the shoes exactly here. Select a brush tool, right click and make sure hardness is, you know, like 20, 30%, so 35 is fine. Make a brush really small. 
and this layer has to be under your model that's important okay so it's under our model now this thing requires little bit practice so don't worry if it takes time so i'm gonna go and paint it somewhere around here like this and after that little bit here after that go to your opacity and make it somewhere around like 30 40 percent right click and make sure hardness is now zero percent and then start painting here like this and a little bit here so i think that is good enough maybe a little bit more okay that's perfect now we have to add the cast shadow that will go far so for that go and create a new blank layer and it will also understay our model so double click on it and name it cast shadow now to see what is going on here i'm gonna go and turn off the eye of this model layer and make sure your cast shadow layer is active after that hold your control key and command if you are using apple then go and click on the layer mask of the model so you will have selection of the model and then make sure you have your paint bucket tool here and the black color and fill it after that to remove the selection go to select and deselect now let's make it flat so it looks like it's on ground so for that press ctrl t and don't directly rotate it like this hold your ctrl key and drag it from a corner like this and after that hold another ctrl key and drag it like this it can take a little bit trial and error but it's doable go and confirm it now let's go and turn it on so we can have idea like where the shadow is okay so it's a little bit off so i'm gonna select my move tool and move it a little bit here then again ctrl t hold my ctrl key and adjust it until it fits properly i think this is good then go and confirm it now first of all let's go and reduce the opacity so it blends with the ground i'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around you know 45 looks good now let's apply some blur to make shadow a little bit softer and for that i'm gonna go to filter blur and select gaussian blur and don't apply too much or it just looks really bad i'm gonna go and keep it somewhere around like two three percent so two percent looks good hit ok and after that get an eraser because some of the shadow is in the sky and it won't be visible there so before you erase right click make sure hardness is zero percent and then go and erase the shadow from here like this so that is done and the final effect is ready now i'm gonna go and apply now i'm gonna go and make it more colorful so it goes with you know the cartoonish filling of the image so for that i'm gonna go and create new adjustment layer and select vibrance and it will go on top of everything and go and increase it to like really crazy 70 80 percent so keep it somewhere like 78 looks good then go and close it so that's it and this is the final output so i really hope that you guys learned something from this video and if it did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions feel free to ask me in comment section below and if you are new here you can click on any of these boxes to check out more videos by me and you can also click on that subscribe button so every time i upload a new video you will get the update plus clicking on that subscribe button will take you to my youtube channel where i have tons of photoshop tutorials waiting for you so till then goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop